Imagine not having the ability to speak your thoughts, your joys, your sorrows. You still feel all of life's emotions, you just can't say them. And then after a lifetime of struggle and pity and pain, you find something that makes your ability sing so loudly that it forces others to pay attention. That's what happened to James Jimmy Reagan, and this is his journey. On July 6th, 1993, the Reagans added a little color to the family. James Reagan, or Jimmy, was born the middle of five children, all one year apart. He was always that sort of blade of grass that would grow through the tar. At two years old, Jimmy was independent, capable, and healthy. Yes. His mom, Peg, yes. says by two and a half, that changed. During that period of time, uh, he began to isolate himself. He could no longer say my name. That was a pivotal moment for me to realize that there was something really wrong. Jimmy was diagnosed with complex autism and it was regressive, meaning as he got older, the communication skills that he had learned were going backward. He also always had these GI issues. On top of the autism, Jimmy was allergic to everything, foods and environment. He was sick often, but could not communicate his pain. We could not keep him in the classroom for a whole week. You know, we get a call, he's got a fever, you gotta come and pick him up. By 14, the family decided to pull Jimmy from school. He weighs 62 pounds. Most, pe most people would think he's seven or eight years old. Jimmy's older brother, Jack, um, said to me, you don't see it, he's dying. Doctors would later find Jimmy suffers from mast cell disease, a painful and chronic autoimmune disorder. Through surgery and diet, they managed, but Jimmy still couldn't complete any tasks on his own. Until one day, his therapist asked him to draw one page from a magazine. And so he's drawing page 32, then he's drawing page 36, then he's going through National Geographic and he's just going on and he's starting to draw all these different pages. And I'm thinking, he's doing something independent. From pencil to crayon, crayon to oil pastels, Jimmy drew. I showed him a Van Gogh and it was like really the lights went on. When Jimmy was 16, the Reagans threw a party for all his doctors and nurses at the U of M Autism Center. They decorated it with Jimmy's art. She goes, who is the artist? You're supporting some young artist. And I said, it's Jimmy. And she went, you're kidding me. And then her face kind of went like, and she was like, we don't know anything about this kid. One party grew to one gallery. People have been asking me, you know, you should have an opening for a gym. And so I said, sure, why not? 250 people attended Jimmy's opening at Sunfish Cellars in St. Paul. We sold all the pastels. We, I just was sat there and I thought, this is like crazy. This is just crazy. Mm -hmm. Pastels then grew into paint. This one was in Berlin. Girl with hat. Germany, Italy, Chicago, L.A. Mm -hmm. Art lovers from around the world started asking for a Jimmy. I saw a postcard-sized flyer, um, if you will, of a show that Jimmy had done. Good enough for a gallery, good enough for a church. It was so compelling that I called Jimmy's mother. The art director of First Presbyterian of South St. Paul received permission to hang more than a dozen Jimmy's inside the sanctuary. We are looking through Jimmy's eyes. Through Jimmy's eyes. That became the name of his company. But why stop at painting? And I call him up and I said, Tim, can you print on silk? And he said, I think so. Peg took some of Jimmy's signature strokes, little color-loaded squiggles that Jimmy calls tick marks, and she put them on silk ties and pocket squares and scarves. And people were like, where'd you get the bow tie? And you know, where'd you get the scarf? And I'm like, well, I made them. And it's like, well, I want one. We decided to bring it in. Soon, one of the city's finest men's stores, Martin Patrick III, put Jimmy's clothing accessories for sale. A huge part of fashion, and especially now, is through the stories. The artwork is one of a kind. It's super unique. Looks like you're ready Green. for more. Green. This green? Green, yes. Okay. Jimmy is now 24 years old, mm -hmm. doing commissioned work for special clients, still unable to hold a conversation. Mm -hmm. Jimmy uses his art 
as his voice, because talent speaks for itself. I, I always wish I, I knew what he was thinking, you know, in his head. Like, Mom, it's always been there. You just didn't see it. Pretty neat, and thanks to the Reagans for doing that with us. To date, Through Jimmy's Eyes has sold thousands of clothing accessories and about 500 paintings. He sold 500 paintings, and he gave back more than $50,000 that those paintings have raised to various charities and organizations that have helped him along the way. Other revenues go towards Jimmy's care. He still needs a full-time in-home caretaker. Pretty neat. I think it, it, a beautiful job. You know, when we talk about art in this country and art education and giving people an opportunity to show who they are, they should watch Jimmy's story. Yeah, there's one piece we couldn't put in there, and it was, it's hard to understand what autism actually does to your ability to communicate, because some people may not understand that. There was a picture he drew and it had his name backwards and upside down. So it said Jimmy backwards and upside down. His mom said, why did you write that? And he painted over it and he wrote it again, backwards and upside down. She goes, Jimmy, why are you doing this? And he says, Jimmy backwards, upside down. He was telling his mom that he feels sick, mm -hmm. and that was the only way he could communicate that to her. And the next day, he was diagnosed with mast cell disease. Wow. So incredible you talk about story. the power of art there? Yeah. Yeah, you talk about an incredible person, and what a gift. Wow. Sky's the limit. Keep I it up, Jimmy. I have nothing I can add. We'll be right back.